Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Merits of Tawheed. The excellence of Tawheed. Tawheed means monotheism. And that is to worship Allah alone, purely by your actions. The things are not left to what people say, but the, to the actions of people. As they say, actions speak more than words. So the action is to worship him purely alone, making sure that you do not involve anyone as a partner in your worship to Allah. Otherwise, I mean, everybody believes that uh, God is one. Every, all people believe that God is one. I haven't come across any tribe or cult or religious people who believe that there are three creators of the world. No. Therefore, the right of Allah upon each one of us is to worship Him alone. Worship, what is demanded with, the wor with, with the worship is the quality of the worship, not the quantity. A small, pure worship is better than big quantity of worship, but it's not pure. I repeat, a small quantity of worship is better, much better, than a large quantity of worship, but not pure. I want to say this, that Allah has rights upon us. He created us for that purpose. He said, I have not created mankind, jinn kind and mankind, but to worship me. So you should understand that this is the reason of you being here in this life. He created you for that. You can't say to him, no, I want to be in this life for, a, for another reason than the reason you created me. You're going to leave this life as all people had to leave before you. Come on. So the rights, the right of Allah upon you is to worship Him alone. Now, you have to know that you have right um, upon your Lord as well. If you implemented that monotheistic worship, that He should, he, this is a right that He made upon Himself. If you implemented His right upon you, then you have a right upon him that he does not punish you or suffer you or, or punish you, etc. And that you go to Jannah, paradise. Monotheism is a security, safety, safety of soul, peace of, uh, 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 it's a peace feeling that you feel in your heart when you are monotheistic to Allah. In your worship and monotheism is the flavor of worship you know the flavor flavor of worship how many people they worship but they do not taste the flavor of worship the Prophet said to his companion Mu'adh oh Mu'adh do you know what is the right of Allah over his people he said Allah and his messenger know best and the Prophet replied, The right of Allah upon his servants, that they should worship him, setting no partners in their worship to him. Oh Mu'adh, do you know what would be then the right of the, of the servants upon their Lord? Then Mu'adh replied again and said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet replied and said, The right of Allah upon his servants, upon his servants is that he does not punish them that means no more adab la yu'adhibuhum he doesn't torture or punish them so there is a guarantee here from Allah's punishment there's a guarantee for entering paradise no matter what, no matter what may have happened before that we're going to come to this how do we prove that uh, monotheism is a security? 
Allah said in the Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who believed in Allah, while they did not mix with their belief any kind of zulm. Zulm here, in general, it means um, oppression, wrongdoing. That's what it means. So those who believe in Allah, mixing in their belief no wrongdoing, for them, there should be a security. And they are the guided ones. Now when that verse was revealed on the Prophet ﷺ, the companions felt that there's a tragedy here. They came to the Prophet, bowing on their knees, saying, Oh Prophet, who is he? that did not wrong himself. Who's he that did not sin? The Prophet said, this is not what you thought. Didn't you hear the words of the righteous servant of Allah who said to his son, Ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka la dhulmun azim Oh my son, do not set up partners with Allah. Do not fall in shirk. For shirk is a great wrongdoing. So shirk is the greatest wrongdoing. Yes. Since we say that Tawheed monotheism is a guarantee for Jannah, we say also that what opposes Tawheed, shirk, setting up partners with Allah, it gives a guarantee that you will never enter paradise and you will not get out of hell. Some people think that uh, mere believing that there's one creator in the world, that's enough. That's Tawheed. No. Even the pagans believe that there's, there's no creator but Allah. But they should be worshiping none but Allah. When they believe that there's no creator except Allah. That is why some people, they fell in aspects of paganism while they think that they are monotheist as long as they believe that there's one creator that is not true that is not true because they invoke someone other than Allah they ask the dead people and when they ask the dead people they're asking someone who is not available he's not alive he's not present that means he doesn't hear if they believe that he can hear, either they believe that he, be, that he can hear everybody or some. If they say that, yes, the dead man, the righteous person, um, he can hear all people, not some of them, then, then this is the greatest paganism. How can a human being, when he was alive, he could not hear more than two or three persons. So how, come, how did it come about that after his death he can hear all at the same time? despite the variety uh, uh, of their places, despite the variety of their uh, languages. So that makes, uh, makes the case is making people equal in their characters with Allah. So that is shirk. Among the attributes of the believers, of the servants of Allah, that they do not set up partners with Allah. Allah the Almighty says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرْ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَى أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا I was really struck and impressed by this ayah. It's beautiful. Let me translate it to you. And those who do not invoke with Allah another deity or kill the soul that Allah had made sacred or forbidden to be killed, except by right, and do not commit unlawful 
sexual intercourse. And whoever should do that, he should meet a penalty, which will be multiplied for him in the punishment on the day of resurrection. And he abide therein, humiliated, except the one who repented and believed and worked righteous deeds. For such people whom Allah will be substituting their evil deeds to become good deeds. Allah will be substituting their bad deeds to become good deeds. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا For Allah is ever forgiving all merciful. Monotheism means to purify your intention in your worship, to unify it and purify it. Let it be for Allah. But also there's another condition for the, for the perfect worship. Now we have guaranteed, you know, the first condition for worship is to worship Allah purely. Okay? Involving none in your worship to Him. So there are two conditions for the worship. Now if the first is fulfilled, we need another condition to be fulfilled. And that is to meet the constitution of worship, to follow it, to confine yourself to it. There is nothing that you can desire of worship thinking that it can drive you closer to Allah. No way. Because the worship has a system and you have to meet the system. All of those two conditions are mentioned in a beautiful verse, which is the last verse of the 18th surah, Al-Kahf. Let's read it. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَادًا Say, I am nothing but a human being, the like of you, similar to you. It is being revealed to me that your, that your, your God is only one God. So whoever wishes, hopes the meeting with his Lord, let him then work a righteous deed and setting no partners with Allah. These two are important two conditions. That means worshipping none but Allah and worshipping Allah not but by the sources of worship that are consistent in the book of Allah and the sunnah of his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Those are the two conditions. We believe that the best worshipper ever among those who worship Allah is the Prophet. And we believe that you won't reach to do the same worship equally with the type of the Prophet's worship. So there is no need to add anything in addition to the Prophet's worship. Why do you have to add something? Since you will die before maybe... Uh, 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 implementing maybe 10%, let's say 50% of the Prophet's worship. So why do you have to exceed matters of worship that the Prophet did not worship Allah with? So those are the, the two conditions in order to have a perfect, approved worship to Allah. The word approved is, is very much understood nowadays. You put your credit card, you wait until you get the response, approved. And your worship should also, uh, we should also implement the two conditions of the worship, otherwise it won't be approved. Let me give you an example. If you want to pray, we know that the condition of your prayer is wudu. And that is to perform ablution before you get into your prayer. Well, let's say that one person doesn't want to perform wudu. 
deliberately. And he said, I just want to worship my Lord at any time. I don't want to perform wudu. Will we be bargaining with him? Saying, mm, it's okay. Anyway, you're worshiping your God. No. No way. No bargaining. The prayer is not accepted. I mean, look. If you want to go, if you want to have a visa for any country, okay, mm, they'll say to you, those are our conditions. Either accept them or you don't enter. This is the condition of entering our country. So, so then you say, well, I have to compromise. Okay, I accept your conditions. Then, visa approved. And also, the same thing is going with Allah, the creator of the countries, the creator of laws. His conditions should primarily rather be implemented rather than people's condition. And the right of Allah um, should be given more consideration than the right of anyone else. So, purely, I, briefly I can say, as I said in the beginning, worship is a matter of quality, not a matter of quantity. And that is why we believe that they will, there are people who will be extremely worshiping God Almighty. But they did not implement uh, either both conditions or one of the conditions. If one of the conditions in, is, is not implemented, then the worship is not a worship. And until both conditions are fulfilled. And that is to worship Allah purely as the pure honey you love to drink or to take. You love the pure honey. And Allah loves the pure worship as you love the pure honey. See you later. Next time, inshallah, we're going to give more details about that. Through a dewdrop, there is only one guy.